Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello, welcome to Parenting in the 21st Century. I'm Zena Shefchik. Today we have with us Chris and Noah Fowler who are going to talk to us about the Fresh Air Fund. Welcome Chris and Noah. Thank you for having us. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Um, I found out about the Fresh Air Fund when I noticed it on our library's programming schedule uh, for our meeting room mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, all sorts of bells went off in my head because I remembered seeing advertising about the Fresh Air Fund when I was growing up. So I was eager to find out about it and uh, the fact that it's still around and mm -hmm. uh, how it's been transformed, if it has at all. So Chris, if you would, let us uh, tell us, tell our audience about what the Fresh Air Fund actually is and does. Great. Um, the Fresh Air Fund actually has been around since 1877. Um, so it's transformed in that it uses buses and things now um, to get the students or the children up to the capital region. Um, and actually the children from New York City go to 13 states in Canada. And it is a program where low income children from New York City who really wouldn't be able to afford a summer vacation can have one because of host families. So they go and they stay for a week or two f with just regular old families living in communities like ours. So it's exclusively New York City children. Yes. And so that must mean that it's the Fresh Air Fund. Did it begin in New York mm -hmm. City? Is that yep. that's uh, its roots? Exactly. So okay, and it's a uh, uh, northeast states, mm -hmm. meaning uh, New England, New York, yep. I assume. Virginia. Um, goes as south, far south yep. as Virginia? So some of them go south, but then most children come north. Okay. Um, New Jersey, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, um, and Canada, okay. and New York, obviously. Till 18, 1877, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's been around a while. I'm not that old, but yeah. I, did, I do remember hearing about it when I was a child. Yep, for uh, sure. Good. Um, tell us how you got involved, and uh, I assume uh, Noah can tell us a little bit about what the experience has, sure. has been like. Um, actually, my husband and I started hosting before we had Noah. Um, I first learned about the program through an advertisement in the Times Union and um, I'm a teacher and so I was able to host for two weeks. Um, so every summer since I got my job as a teacher um, we hosted and then took a little break while Noah was younger because the youngest fresh air children who come are six and the oldest who can come for the first time are 12 um, but they can participate in the program until they're 18 years old. So um, my husband and I hosted three boys um, at different years until Noah came along. And then when Noah was five, we started hosting again. And we've had the same fresh air friend come. This will be his eighth year staying with us. He's come and visited with Noah ever since Noah was five. So the same, same person. Mm -hmm. Okay. How old are you now, Noah? I'm 13 You're right 13, now. 13. So you've had someone with you every summer for seven years, did you say? Yep. This will be his eighth yeah. time All right. Coming. Well, that, that's quite a record. Is that typical um, of people, of, of children returning mm -hmm. to their host families? Um, more than two-thirds of the fresh air children will return to the same family the next year. Um, sometimes they'll come for a number of years and then because the, um, the children get older it doesn't work out that they come back again. Um, once in a while it's just not the greatest fit for that family and that's okay and the family says um, either they'd like to try a different match with a different fresh air child or they take a summer off or they volunteer and help the program in a different way and then they host again later. So. Um, there's a lot of different ways for people to get involved and each family's situation is different. Um, but most of the time, more than two thirds of the time, the children do return. 
that's that again is a, quite a record yeah. um, of I think probably the support given both to the children coming from New York City and the support given to the families who are hosting as well to yeah. have a record like that yeah so um, do you um, tell me about what is called on your website Friendly, was it Friendly, friendly towns, Town? Right. Friendly Towns, right. right. So Friendly Towns really means um, the geographical region that the New York City children visit. And again, they can be a little bit flexible. So the this area's Friendly Town is called Latham Friendly Town, but there are families from Loudonville, Latham itself, and um, there are even some Niskayuna families. Um, and then as more families become involved, they divide and make a new fam friendly town. So there were a few families from Del Mar who were part of the Latham friendly town at first. And then more and more families became involved in Del Mar, and now there's a Del Mar friendly town. And that just means that there's one volunteer or a few volunteers who are in charge of um, keeping up with the paperwork for the families, letting the families know when is the bus coming, what are the dates for this summer, um, who to call if you have a question or the fresh air child gets sick, those kinds of things. So in addition to hosting, I help by volunteering while the um, families, while the fresh air children are here, so that if something comes up and the families need a hand with something, they have someone to call. So if, uh, if a family or an individual made a phone call to the number that we're going to present mm -hmm. in, a, in a little bit, um, would, they, would the person at the other end of the line direct that person to the nearest friendly town? Is that how it would work? They can do it a couple different ways. Um, one way is if a family around here was interested in hosting, they could call the New York City number and leave their information, and then their information would get forwarded up here and so someone from the right geographical region would call them. Okay. Um, also, people can leave their information on the Fresh Air website. Um, the person who answers in New York City doesn't always have our phone numbers right at their fingertips, mm -hmm. and so it's easier and quicker for them to take down the information about the families, and then um, it'll get emailed or, or sent to us through the New York City staff. Okay, and I want to I want to make something clear mm -hmm. too is that that initial phone call isn't in it of itself a commitment. It could just be a, an inquiry as oh, far absolutely. as information goes. Yep. As absolutely. Well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Noah, tell us about uh, your experiences with a fresh air child. I, I gather you've had the one. Austin, is, did you say his name Austin. was? Austin. And how, how you felt when, do you remember what you felt like when he, he came for the first time to visit with you? Uh, no, I don't remember what it felt like the first time, but I do know that before he came, we were actually supposed to have a different fresh air child come, and he couldn't come, and I was very upset, so we drove down to New York City, and we picked up Austin, and he's been coming ever since. Okay. Did you, were you able to specify um, the gender of the child mm -hmm. and the age of the child that would spend time with you so that you yep. would, I assume, have a companion for your son? Right, so when families decide that they'd like to try hosting, they request um, a boy or a girl and an age range. So six to eight or nine to 10 or 11 to 12 is how they break it down. Um, and then at the New York City end, the um, people who are working with the applications from the children will match those things up. Okay. And they'll use other considerations as well to try and make the best match possible. So there's other things on the applications that mm -hmm. can, ten, that can uh, ensure a better fit exactly. than uh, just only just age and right. gender. Right, so um, families list activities that they like to do. Um, they list, um, if there are things that they know will be going on while the fresh air child is, is visiting, um, whether or not they have any pets. Allergies can be a really big consideration in terms of making the match. Um, when Austin first started coming to our house, we did not have a cat, and now we do, and he's pretty allergic to our cat. Oh. So we had to talk with his mom about um, some over-the-counter medicine for him to be able to take while he was visiting us. Um, 
and he didn't want to give up coming. And so we just kind of try and keep Austin and the cat as far away from each other as possible. <laughs> um, dogs can also be um, a pretty big consideration when making a match because sometimes New York City kids can have a fear of dogs. Um, dogs aren't always as much of a pet in the city as they are around here. More of a watchdog or a protection. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're very careful to give descriptions of the dogs and how big the dogs are and um, kind of let the New York City people know that they're friendly dogs here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a couple of days for the New York City child to get used to being in the house with the dog. Um, but most of the time that works out. Yeah, I would, Im I would imagine it is uh, quite an adjustment for uh, city uh, children to uh, uh, adjust to, uh, well, up here, country suburban life, or <laughs> yeah. I guess. Um, what do you, uh, before we uh, get to that, what, uh, um, what do you think most prevents most people from getting involved in this kind of thing? Is it concern about the kind of thing that you're talking about, health issues, uh, adjusting to uh, family situations? Families up here, what yes. makes them hesitate? Mm -hmm. um, vacation time can be one thing and so in our region we're a little bit unique because we have a one-week program and typically the fresh air fund likes to have two weeks be the minimum stay oh okay um, once families get to know each other some fresh air children who are returning stay longer they'll stay for a month or all summer um, but we have had a lot of success with a one-week program as an introduction. Like, right. if I'm not sure if I want to do this, I'd like to try it for a week. That's been very successful for us. And then also, um, families only have limited vacation time. And so to be able to say that they will have one week with their fresh air friend and then one week you know, on their family camping trip or going to see grandma and grandpa or something like that seems to really work out for us. Yeah, in this day and age when both parents are exactly. working, that, that I hadn't actually thought about yeah. that. So, okay. Yep. But, and that the one week as a trial period, too, like yeah. just about anybody can handle a Something week, right? Something a week, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. so how are the children chosen from New York City? Um, All the children there register through a community agency. So it might be somewhere where they go after school. Um, it might be a Boys and Girls Club, something like that. Um, sometimes teachers make recommendations, but it'll be an, it won't be a school. It'll be a community agency that um, registers the children. And all of the children have a medical exam before they come, and they come with a medical report. And the parents also fill out an application form, and they um, give background information about the children, nicknames, um, what do they like to do, um, anything that they might be feeling a little nervous about to come up and visit. And so the families get that packet of information when the children come off the bus. And it's nice to read through that and kind of get to know the child that way. Austin, what, uh, I'm calling you Austin. I'm sorry, Noah. <laughs> What does what do you like uh, most about having Austin up here? What do, what do, and what do you like to do together? Um, one of the things that we do is we go to our camp in the Adirondacks, and I don't know that that's pretty fun. We're uh, outside together. We kind of like the same kind of things. Um, we have a hammock in our yard. That that's one of the big ones where we push each other as hard as we can to see if we can make each other fall out. and <laughs> I mean, it hurts sometimes, but it was better when we were younger because we were smaller and lighter, but. <laughs> You're 13 now. Yeah, you? <laughs> if the muscle makes up for it. <laughs> Do you, um, did Austin know how to, s are you near a lake or some kind of water? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we the, are. In, in the, on the web page I was reading for the Fresh Air Fun website, they were saying that a lot of uh, children from the city do not know how to swim. Mm -hmm. And did, was Austin in that situation? And uh, when he came up here, and has he learned to swim? Have you? I want to say that he didn't know how to swim. Yeah. When he first came up here, or ride a bike, and we taught him both of those things. And now he swims and bikes every summer. How exciting! Mm -hmm. Do you? Um, does he ever? Is this his only time? Um, in away from the city that mm -hmm. when he comes to visit you so that's wonderful yep. and, and does he stay 
uh, more than the two weeks, or is that your vacation nope, time? No, that's our time with that's Austin. That's your time with yep. Austin. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. How much do you, um, let's put it this way, do you ever interact with Austin other than the two weeks that you're, he's here visiting you? Do you write? Do you call? Do you, I guess on uh, email? I don't, I don't know what kids do these days t besides texting. Um, I have his email. Uh, Austin does doesn't have a phone right now, but um, we'll we'll call each other on the house phone sometimes, and I'll send him a Christmas card with a letter in it. But I actually haven't called him yet this year. But that's pretty much the only uh, communication that we uh, have between each other. So it's not too much, no. It's not too much, no. But you look for he. You know he looks forward to it. I would imagine that now you're in the age where the physical changes are going to be dramatic so in a year not seeing someone might be really uh, big changes in that in that year so you see real growth Austin actually is three years older than Noah. Oh, he is? Yep. Oh, okay. So there was a year where he went home shorter than I am and came back taller than I am. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yep. Tell us about the bus, when the bus arrives. What's that ladder like? Um, where, does it where does it come to first? Do well, it, it goes, last year it went, our bus went to the, uh, to the church by the crossings, I'm not quite sure the name of it. Uh, Christ Our Light, formerly St. Francis de Sales. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a gathering of people there in front of the church, and uh, people bring things to entertain themselves in case the bus is late, <laughs> which is like books and chalk and things. And uh, when the bus comes, a lot of people have signs to welcome their returning friend or a new friend to the area, so they'll hold their signs up and they'll, uh, there'll be a little crowd around the bus door, so when people get off, I don't know, it's kind of, that's somewhat of a celebration. Sounds like it would be. That's wonderful. Could you tell us, uh, mm -hmm. the audience, about the definition of a family I mean, what, and what is considered a host family and what kind of, there's some kind of screening process? Sure. Um, the word family really is pretty flexible. It could be, um, a single parent with children. Um, sometimes it's even been a single adult. Um, there was a teacher, starting out teacher last summer who hosted on her own. Um, or it could be a more traditional family with mom and dad and several children. Um, we have some partners who are hosting children. So it's pretty flexible in terms of um, the definition of the family. All the adults in the home, we fill out an application together like a volunteer from the area would go and visit and meet the family have a tour of the house the fresh air child does not need to have his or her own room but they do need to have their own place to sleep um, so we just kind of do a tour and make sure that the house is safe and there's a place for the fresh air child to sleep we meet everyone in the family um, everyone who's 18 or older they do a background check form and the fresh air fund um, takes care of all that paperwork at that end, which is very reassuring to the New York City families. Um, you know, to be thinking that they're sending their six-year-old or their nine-year-old up to stay with strangers. Right. Um, to know that someone from the fund has met them up here, and then um, that some paperwork and um, background information has been looked through to make sure that it's a safe place for them to visit is really reassuring. Um, and we do ask the families to provide us with the names of four references. Um, they can be some friends and neighbors, but then also we ask that one be um, more of a, like a community member. They kind of refer to it as professional, but not really someone that you work with, more of someone that knows how the adults interact with the children. So a little league coach or a music teacher or a religious ed teacher, something along those lines. Um, they ask for one reference to be to fit into that category. Okay, that gives me some uh, idea. Um, tell me, talk, talk to us a little bit about um, what kind of support the host families get um, mm -hmm. from the committees or friendly town yep. organizations. Because I think my, you know, my initial concern would be, what if the child gets sick? Right. What if the child? Um, 
doesn't want to be here, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of right. thing. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and those are two, you know, common things that, that happen. And we do have a group like the, we call them chair people of all the areas. Um, we all have each other's phone numbers, and when the um, families meet the Fresh Air children at the bus stop, we give out a sheet that has, these are all the people that you can contact if you need help with something. Um, and then the New York City office has someone sitting by the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week, during the months that the children are out visiting. So, you know, if it's the middle of the night and, God forbid, you had to go to the emergency room, you can call the New York City number and someone will pick up the phone and talk to you about that. Um, and then also, for homesickness or if it really seems like, you know, there's just a personality clash or something, there's a social services department also at New York, in the New York City office. The first call would be to us here locally. Um, and we've gone over and visited with families and said, you know, how can we help make the week be a fun time? Um, and then if we need to, we'll call the New York City office and get them involved and try and make it be the best experience for everyone. Okay. Sometimes people just hit it right off and other times it takes a little bit of just, you know, figuring out how everyone's going to get along. Right. Um, before we end, and I want to make sure we cover a couple of things, which mm -hmm. are uh, financial uh, expectations from yep. the, the host family. Mm -hmm. and what kind of activities are expected like are, are yep. in, in terms of entertainment so I um, there aren't any financial like requirements to be a host family um, there isn't a financial stipend that's given to a host family it's all volunteers the only people in the fresh air fund who get paid are the year-round staff members in New York City and there aren't a ton of those <laughs> um, so really it's uh, it's an organization that re relies on its volunteers. Um, but that being said, it's not really expensive to host a fresh air child. It means that you do whatever you usually do with one extra, children, one extra child. Um, there are a lot of places in the area that admit fresh air children for free. So um, Funplex in East Greenbush, for example, allows fresh air children to come for free. The Great Escape and the Wild Center up in the Adirondacks allow fresh air children to come for free. Um, many families have had really great luck um, with a camp or a place that they've been visiting if they've said, you know, we're here and this is our fresh air child, do you offer any discounts or things like that? And um, businesses are really pretty accommodating about that type of thing. Um, and I find that it kind of spurs people on to do the things in our community and our region that we always say, oh yeah, someday we're gonna go to the, but we never get there. And having the fresh air child with us to show these places like the New York State Museum or the Plaza or wherever right. it is. things in our backyard. Exactly, it kind of gives you that extra little boost to actually go and do those things. And lots of those things are free. Right, and, my, and, and New York City children haven't experienced even the most basic things. I mean, you were talking about bike riding or swimming. Right. So there's no uh, gr expectation that you're taking these children on a great uh, right. uh, road trip across exactly. country or anything right. like that. It's so. your regular summertime, okay. and you'd really be surprised at things that they haven't done before. Um, we have raspberries on our street. And that was like the first place we would go when Austin arrived was to go pick the raspberries. So those kinds of things that we kind of take for granted as everyday things we do are new experiences for them. That's wonderful. So uh, before I end the program, and um, I'm going to have the uh, website um, mm -hmm. address uh, on our uh, screen as we leave, Great. as well Thank as the you. phone number mm -hmm. that people can call. Uh, if they're interested in finding out any more information, not yep. a commitment, just right. to find out any more information. Um, I want to know if there's anything that we haven't covered that you want to talk about before we say goodbye. Anything you can think of that you want to emphasize? Or I would say in? that um, we do have usually one event during each um, block of time. So like this year's dates are... Um, that's it. Oh, <laughs> there, there you go. This and year's dates. It's not too late this year. It's not too it's late not because too late. we have some August trips. Okay. So August tenth through the seventeenth, for example, is when Austin's coming this year. Um, so it, we would have time to do that. There's, um, I think it's July twenty-first to the twenty-eighth, and then there's a trip that's um, right at the end of the school year. So. Um, 
the Friday before 4th of July, I think it's July 1st, is the first bus coming up to um, So there are Starlight. still opportunities? Absolutely. To call yep. now. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, and so during each one of those times, we try and have, like we have a picnic or we have an outing so that there's a, um, a way for all the host families to get together. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Anything you want to Anything add, Noah? No. It's a gather. It's a good, ex a good, a wonderful experience for you. It is. It's for me and Austin. Right. I mean, we had a neighborhood baseball game, mm -hmm. our annual neighborhood baseball game, where the families go against each other, the kids and the parents, and Austin got to participate in that. So, in the city, I don't know if he really would have gotten to do that. Right. Sounds like a wonderful experience for everyone. It is really. Everybody benefits. Right. Thank you, Chris Fowler, Thank you. Noah Fowler. Thank you, Thank you for, for taking us. the time. Thanks for having us. About the Fresh Air Fund. Thank you for being with us, Parenting in the 21st Century.